you know, there was uh, I thought Quinnipiac. I don't think that was our best best game. Uh, that we got better as the game went on, went along. But I think it helped us, you know, having a little little talk on Saturday morning and as a group and what we're looking to accomplish. And they came out and had probably one of the best games of the year at Princeton. <coughs> Keeping momentum, I'm sure, is a, is a focal point now. How do you balance that with you know the seniors and honoring them on senior night and everything? Cause it's, it is about them for that night for at least a short short time. Well, it's this this whole our whole season the whole is is all about the players anyway. So you know it's not about really really much else. Players play the game and it's their team. So you know for senior night, hopefully we can honor them. You know the four seniors. Uh, by playing as hard as we possibly can for them, and hopefully it's a positive result, and that's really all we're trying to, you know, what we're trying, trying to accomplish. But it, you know, it's a real, it's a, you know, it's a positive night, it's a positive night, you know, uh, regardless of score, and it just, it's just great to see the seniors kind of get the last, last game of the year at home. Can you just talk about, you know, first of all, Ryan's uh, had a great year. What has he brought to you? This year is compared to other seasons. I think he's been more consistent. Um, he's, Jesus, every every game it seems like he's doing something um, that positively you know impact the game for us. Whether it be a goal, whether it be you know a back check, uh, you know a big hit. You know he's he's a different type of player that there aren't many around that can skate, shoot, um, be a top line guy, and the big part is. Just being a physical presence, like he's 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 actually played mean this year, and coming from I'll, I'll speak on my behalf. I like it. I thought I saw the coach abandoned him toward the, in the second half of last season. Did he kind of take that on last year a little bit? Yeah, I felt uh, you know again we we talked about this before as you know as you know to the media about sometimes guys don't put up the points, but they are getting better. And we've talked about this with Mike, Mike Vecchioni in the past. He just, sometimes guys and, and people, we put a self-worth on points. And I know that's what fuels some guys' desire. And I think they played great and they had a goal that game when, in all actuality, they, they were pretty average that night. But they feel that they had a point or two and felt, you know, everything's just fine. Um, or Scarf, I really feel that he's, even if he doesn't score, he's going to have an impact on the game. How much did you come into this season with some uncertainty of where the goals were going to come? It was the same. It was the same feeling that uh, getting the call from Josh Juris uh, the first week of August that year, and me sitting with the staff and saying, and the more I remember really talking to Dave Bagley, our equipment guy, about it. Where are we going to get scoring from? <laughs> and it just kind of worked out, didn't it? So same thing has kind of happened this year. When you give some others opportunity, they're going to run with it. And a lot of these guys have. And it's, it's, it's kind of nice to see that they're being rewarded, you know, for kind of, you know, sticking it out and, and battling through, you know, not being the guy, you know, for a few years. You're never going to be perfect, but um, are you guys playing your, is it fair to say you're playing your best hockey this season right now? No, not, not, no. I don't think over, we, we need to do it. I want to see it on the weekend. That's uh, something that I've, you know, we've addressed with the Unity Group. We've talked about it a little bit, and I'm sure they're going to talk about it again with our team psychologist today. And hopefully, we can get that consistency over a two-game span. Because you have to have it if you ever want to do anything. Last time I checked, it's you have one bad game that can put you in the hole after the season and, and, and in playoffs and now you're fighting an uphill battle and if you're really fortunate enough to get in the one game elimination if you have you want to try to sock in 10 to 15 minutes of off time so it's going to catch you and hopefully last year was a good example of that and they learned from it. Can you point to being outside the paralyzed ranking right now Cornell and Colgate is an opportunity against especially Cornell team highly ranked to sure. pick up some, some steam in the pairwise rankings? We haven't even addressed really the pairwise. I think we did a couple weeks ago and kind of demonstrated to the team that this is what can happen 
if you have an off night and how you'll kind of drop like a rock. And it's, it has a positive effect too. If you start to string together some good games, how quickly you can rise. I think, well, what were we, about 32 or something a few weeks ago? I couldn't even tell you what we're today. I can't even keep up with them. I don't even want to keep up with them. You know, I just, just so we're, we're worried about this and focus on this team and just trying to get ready for a very good <laughs> Colgate group. RPI hasn't won a lot of games this year, but they did beat Cornell last night when they played Missouri. Do you think you can take out of that? I want to thank them for that, uh, but it's about it. Uh, you never know. You know, I, 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 can they beat that team twice? Who knows? Anything can, can, can happen in college hockey, but uh, they're going to have the work cut out for us. I know that because Cornell can, they're a very business like structured team when they get on the road. Um, just knowing Mike Schaefer and his, his group and his past. So that's going to be a tough haul for RPI, but. All we have to worry about is to take taking care of our backyard and see what happens. And if we can play for a trophy on Saturday night, then great. If not, then it wasn't meant to be, and we put ourselves in that position. Would you say you're cheering for RPI on Friday night? I would say that, yes. And yeah, they've helped us out in the past, and again, I want to thank them. But that's as far as it's going to go. At the beginning of the season, Rick, did you see the potential that Championship, regular season championship would come down to the final night of the regular season. Do you guys involved? How can I answer that? Um, <laughs> and be really, really honest with it, with all of you. No. Uh, I, I just, but you never know. I, I, it's a, it's been a real fun, fun time just coaching this group. Like they've, they've had a lot, they got a lot of fight, and they've, they've proved that this, this year. Um, I think where they were picked and all that kind of fueled their fire a little bit, especially our junior class and our and our seniors. Um, I think it kind of, you know, tick, I would say ticked them off a little bit. And you know, to say that we were happy about it as coaches, that's a you know, I don't think we were either. But you can only use that fuel for so long. I just think they just, I think the start helped us. Sounds crazy, but the start really to help us. And we played some very good teams, and it's, uh, I think it's helped us. It's pretty funny. I was at a speaking event um, before the Princeton game, and I was asked by a so-called, I guess, a fan from, from Union, and he said, can you explain the up-and-down season? <laughs> I said, up-and-down season. And then I kind of explained that last year, and we had 16 wins in league, and now we have two games left, and we're at 15. And that, and that, and that team, everyone was jumping up and down about, but I thought it was a little more, because it had more flash, you know, because of the guys on the team. And this this team doesn't have all that flash, so people think it's an up and down year. And it's just, it's kind of, it's really interesting, like, perception. Is it easier to coach with less flash, or does it not make too much of a difference? No, because the guys that last year that, you know, were big guns, super, I'll give them, there they were, there were some superstars there. Um, they were, they were all about the team. So it wasn't a problem at all. It's I, honestly in my time here, it's never been an issue, like with the student athlete here. They've always bought into the team. It was always team first, and I've been very fortunate. Uh, you know, it's been a it's been a great uh, three years so far. You know, we're not done here this year, but uh, it's been a great year. First year, obviously, freshman year wasn't the best year, but it was a good start to my college career. And last year, obviously, was an amazing season with all those great players and the run we had. And this year, we're looking to do the same. Maybe I'm going further. What do you think of Cornell and Colby coming this weekend? You have this team already. Uh, what's it going to take to, to get two wins this weekend? Uh, they're both two great, great teams. You know, we've had uh, trouble dealing with Cornell in the past, but uh, we got something we're playing for here. If Cornell somehow loses to RPI, which would be great for us, then we can win two, two games this weekend and hopefully get that clear cup and bring it back home where it belongs. Is this still motivation, even if Cornell wins on Friday night? Knowing you could take down a team highly ranked in the pairwise rankings, it could help your tournament hopes. Yeah, you know we're just taking it game by game. You know we know it's uh we're kind of behind in the pairwise rankings, but you never know what can happen in this in in college hockey. You know if we win those two games, some teams lose. We can maybe sneak in the the tournament there, but you know we're taking it game by game and hopefully uh, win the clear cup and then the white law. What expectations did you guys have for this team coming in? And Rick was just saying that. 
he, he believes there might have been some motivation the fact that you guys were picked in the preseason, like in the middle of the pack, six or something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously we lost uh, a couple great pieces to our team from last year. You know, Vecchionia obviously aged out, but uh, like uh, De Simone and Fuzzi, you know, they lost those guys, and everyone was going to doubt us this year because those are two great players. But um, we came in the season rank, uh, picked, high, picked high in the league. Um, but, you know, we wanted to prove everyone wrong. You know, we knew we had the talent to, to go far this season, and then we've been showing that so far and proving people wrong. It seems like you've, it seems like you've been a part of, you know, half of the goal in the last couple of weekends. Has there been something that's given you more of a jump in your game, or do you feel like the whole team is just kind of playing um, at an even higher level than you were earlier? Um, I think it's just the, the team aspect of the game. You know, we, we play simple, and then that's that's how I've been playing recently, and then happily just kind of getting some points there. It's it's kind of just what's been happening, you know. Uh, but everyone's chipping in. I'm just getting the puck to the end. People are banging them home. It's not really anything to it. Uh, there's a, gr a lot of great players on this team that are uh, evenly getting a lot of points and helping the team win here. One in particular, Ryan Scarfell, what can you say about the season he's had? And Rick was just telling us. They came into the season not really sure where the goals were going to come from, and certainly Yeah, you know, we, obviously he wasn't too happy about last year uh, with uh, his goals. Even though he's still a great player, you know, he he stuck to it. He came back this year, fired up to prove people wrong again, and uh, he's been in the right place at the right time, going to the dirty areas where a lot of people don't want to go, and that's where you get the goals and get the get all the. The glory, if you if you want to say, but uh, he's he's been playing great for his team, this team, and uh, especially for himself. But he's a he is a big piece of why we're winning here too. How different has this been this season been for you guys in that you have a lot of talent just across the board, and maybe not one or two of those standout guys. Yeah, it, it evens out our lines. You know, like last year, a lot of people said that we had just one line producing all the goals, and now all four lines are producing goals and. And helping this team win, we I think we are we're a little more stable here. We can roll four lines and keep the pressure on teams, which is which is helping us uh, be successful here. We've had you down here a lot lately. I mean, yeah. how does it feel to kind of have a bunch of games now in your belt and row? You feel like you're kind of in a groove. You're able to play consistently back to back nights. Yeah, obviously it, uh, it feels good. Um, I think the team's playing really well right now. Um, obviously, like we preached about um, a couple times now, we've been playing really simple, and obviously. When you're playing simple in the D zone, everything's um, usually you're seeing shots from like the half walls, and um, you're usually seeing every shot. So um, when you're seeing shots, you're gonna make those saves, and that's gonna help you get in the groove. So I gotta um, pretty much attribute the success to, to how we're playing right now as a team. Um, so that's definitely a good thing right now. We gotta keep that going. Does it help on defense? You have two seniors, and then Greg a Junior. I don't leave anybody about. Talk about having the experience factor on, on the back end. Yeah, I think it's it's crucial. I mean, obviously, you got a guy like Connor Light on the backhand who's been here for four years now, and he's a extremely simple D man that you love to play or you love to play behind. And then you got Greg, um, who's just an incredible guy to play in front of too. And then obviously they've been just teaching our freshmen and our younger guys how um, how to play. And uh, like I said, we're just keeping it simple right now. And simplicity in the D zone is really helpful for me. Yeah, I mean, I think every every night when you're playing a, a good goalie, it's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a fun battle. I mean, even looking to to this weekend, playing uh, Colgate's goalie, who's an incredible goalie, and then the next night playing um, Cornell's goalie, who's had a tremendous year. Um, I think that's it's always fun to play. Um, someone on the other net that's skilled and it makes it that much more competitive. So I'm looking forward to it. Now that we're heading into the final week of the regular season here, is your mindset, is your mentality any different than you feel like it was at the beginning of the season? Um, I, I wouldn't say any any different really. I mean, obviously the games matter a little bit more, um, but you try to go into every game with uh, your same routine, kind of the same groove that you've been in and just kind of keep that going. So I wouldn't say it's any different, but it definitely means a lot more to me to, to get that next one, for sure. What's the read on Colgate and Cornell? You guys have seen them once already. What do you expect to show? Yeah, obviously, um, with my time here playing Col uh, Cornell, um, it's been tough. They ended our season freshman year, and then last year um, we've, we went back and forth with them. So I think that's always going to be a tough battle. Um, and Cornell, or uh, Colgate, same thing. We've always had 
one two goal games. Um, I think they keep it really simple and they do um, just about everything they can to keep it that way and they play a really good game. So I think going into Friday night we just need again keep it simple, do our thing and then, um, I think the Saturday night game is going to be really intense and we're going to have to bang some bodies a little bit but uh, I think that game is going to be a lot of fun. So. What can you say about the season Ryan Scarfo's had and Rick was saying they didn't really know where the goals were going to come from this season and he sort of broke out. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, that's huge for him. Obviously, he's one of our hardest workers here, and he's always has been ever since I've known him. So I think it's it's really good to see him start finding his groove and really doing that for us. I think a huge part of our success comes from that guy and what he does for this team. So I think it's huge that he's doing his thing, and uh, I really appreciate it. Can you go back to the start that you guys had this year and now think about the fact that there's a potential that the regular season title is decided in the very last game? Season. Yeah. Did you honestly think you were going to be in this position? I mean, starting the year 0 and 5 was obviously pretty tough, but it was a huge learning curve for us, and I think that uh, we were. It helped us grow as a team big time to kind of dare ourselves out of that hole, and every game was important as uh, after that. So I think going into this last game or last weekend, it's obviously huge. Uh, like you said, the titles on the line. So hopefully we can get some puck luck Friday night um, with RPI, but. Um, even if we don't, playing Cornell, who's the top team in the, in the league, is going to be a lot of fun. I know you have business to take care of on Friday night, but are you cheering for the engineers? <laughs> uh, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, for sure.